You know what I love? Steve Burgess's book. Yes, Who Killed Mom? Uh, a great recounting of a family life here in Canada. And uh, Steve has uh, not only been busy writing, but he's been busy traveling as well and writing about his travels. Strangely enough, Steve Burgess joined Hello. us to tell a story. How so, are Steve? you? What a pleasure to be here. And Always reasonably a pleasure to in see you. Health. Reasonably yeah. in good health. Reasonably we'll get to your yes. gastrointestinal problems. You got, you got home a week ago, and just now you can actually Thursday, say. Thursday. Thursday is the day when I could say my Laotian microbe problems are over. And this is not an uncommon thing for people that travel to exotic no. parts of the world. That no. is just, that's part of the gig sometimes. This is what happens, yeah. I mean, it's a little scary. But on the other hand, I mean, there's advantages. And I'm here to talk to you today about the Bacterial Slim Fast Program. Excellent work, Steve Arches. Always supply, look on Liz, the bright side of life, I we say. We supply the food. Adult diapers extra. Okay, where did you go before we talk about okay, your Okay, I started in the relatively safe and relatively cool Tokyo. Uh, and then I went to Bangkok, one of my favorite places in the world. Then I went down to Singapore. I went up to Georgetown in Malaysia briefly. And then overnighted in Bangkok again and then went up to Laos for a week. And was this, as they say in the business, on assignment? Or was this just a Steve Burgess travel? I ha it's mostly a Steve Burgess travel assignment. But it's like I pay for my own trips. Yeah. And then I try to write about them to try and make the money back. And the one assignment I had on this trip for sure, I hope to sell more stories later, but I had one assignment to write about food in Singapore. Okay. So, so we're going to talk a little bit about food, but let's yeah. look at some pictures too. And, and I must say, uh, <laughs> did you do all these photos yourself? Oh, I did, yes. You're getting Great quite good, photography. Steve. Thank you very much. No, I'm, I'm serious about the photography. Uh, you can tell. Let's look at the first picture. This is just a great photo. Where yeah. was this? That's by, I was just walking along a canal in Bangkok and came upon these kids, took a lot of shots of them, and that's the best one. So cute. They were so shy and yet, you know, so yeah, fascinating. Coy. How much of yeah. your of your traveling when, when you're doing it and you don't have a, you know, for sure assignment on anything, how much of it is just traveling, wandering, and, and sort of wandering keeping your eyes is, open? Wandering is, that's what I do. I mean, what I do is I, I like to usually structure the trip in terms of where I'm going and where I'm staying, and yeah. after that, no more structure. Well, a lot like, of people are afraid to do that, but I think that's how you have the best experiences yeah. when you travel, when you just interact with people. Yeah. No, I mean, to me, uh, I usually go to cities, and one of the reasons is those are the best places for serendipitous wandering. You know, uh, I wrote in one of my st stories, I don't know if it's published yet, is, but when you're in another, and when you're in a foreign city, there's nothing worse than searching and there's nothing better than wandering. You know, Perfect. if you have to look for something in yeah. the city, it's a, horribly it's frustrating. It's horrible. Yeah. But if you can just wander freely, it's bliss. And find it. Okay, let's yeah. look at some more pictures. We'll go to the next one here. Tell us where this is. And oh. what? Something funny happened outside <laughs> the temple? Something funny happened out of this. That tonight. sounds like it's going to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love, so I love a dog, that dog walks into a, a dog, temple. This dog walks into a temple, <laughs> he says, at these prices. Um, no, that's, that's called Wat Rakang, which is uh, not far from, it's across the river from Pier 9 on the Chow Phraya River, if you know Bangkok. Uh, it's a beautiful temple. And um, it being a Buddhist temple, there's a theme, you know, they have these vendors outside that are selling live baby snakes yep. and fish and baby turtles. Now, this is not culinary. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to karma. buy them and set them free yeah. for, for good karma. Yeah, this is carminary. Right, <laughs> and I, I needed good karma because I killed so many pet turtles when I was a kid. Oh, I've yeah. got a, a karmic debt to repay. Yeah, if I ever find a place that releases hamsters, I got a lot of good, <laughs> then you'll, I got yeah. a lot of good 45 to make 45 of them. Because there's hamsters waiting for you in hell. <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, so, so you've I, been I, bad I, to turtles in the past. I bought a couple of turtles thinking I will free a couple of turtles and, and pay part of my debt. So uh, there is a picture I took um, seconds before disaster struck um, that I, I, I think you might have there. Yeah, we do have it. Yeah, uh, there it is. Okay, so uh, explain. You get your turtles. You get the bucket. The, the turtles are in that bucket. You can't see them. And uh, by the way, in the background there, you can see all those catfish. Yeah. They all swarm those piers because people sell fish food turtles? too. Well, I, no, I, I was going to so. say because catfish love turtles. Okay, so you bought the turtles at the temple. Here you are. You're doing a good to, thing. I'm you're getting your good them. karma. What happened? Well, what happened was I saw these other people releasing their turtles <laughs> over a railing and dropping them, and I thought, I don't want my boys to have a seven-foot plunge. I'm going to go down. There's stairs right behind me there. There's these <laughs> stairs, and I thought I'm going to go right down to the water line. And I failed to pick up on the fact that the stairs were not just colored green, but they were covered in oh, river slime. Now, so slippery. The Chow Praia River, if you've ever seen it, a mouse carcass would dissolve in this thing within an hour. <laughs> I think sludge is a good word. Sludge, yeah. yeah. And, well, I went arse over tea kettle. Oh, no. Steve. Uh, I went flying in the air, and the turtles went flying, I went flying, and landed in the, in the ooze, in the carpet of 
Ew. River ooze. Now, the first thing I did was scramble to find my boys, and they were retracted, but they were okay. Thank and, God. And, and they were, Are you talking about your turtles? The turtles, or, or, yes, or, okay, yes. Okay. The other boys, they were okay. They were retracted, too. Totally they were retracted, retracted as well. Yes. Everything was retracted at that point. So I let the turtles free, and they were probably just thinking, why did we get the klutziest rescuer? <laughs> but they survived the They fall. survived, and they took off into the water and hopefully weren't eaten by catfish. But, but I was so covered oh, gross. in river slime that there was a beggar beside the pathway oh, no. begging, and she was laughing at me. I thought you were going to say she gave you money. <laughs> no, it was like, here, clean yourself up. Oh, you look like Steve, hell. because you look at that river, and it's no just bad not things good. living there. I like, think this is why you got sick. I'm just going to say no, it took, it's from no, the river. This was, this was weeks before. Okay, well, let's go to the happened. next photo and tell us uh, where you were. at. Oh, oh no, this is oh, what I can't God. look this, at. This, that is crocodile. That is braised crocodile. How did this wow. make you feel? Not good. <laughs> Which part of the crocodile did that, you, you get? See that, you see that claw, that is white thing there? That's a that's a, claw. A claw? That's a claw. That's a claw sticking. And it oh. looks like there's a molar up in the right. top right oh, there. Top like, left. I did it Steve. only for the shock value and nothing else, but just so know, I could write about it. But you know, shock value in your stomach are precarious oh, I know. partners. And I discovered that crocodiles can actually eat, uh, can actually attack you after you've eaten them. Ah. Yeah, they can attack internally. Yeah, they uh, go from the outside in. Yes, uh, it was. It was or inside out. You know, the thing is, go. like you know, the old thing, it tastes like chicken. If you get past the gristle and the claws and stuff, it does taste like chicken. Fiona forgets this, but when we were on breakfast. Television, we actually ate that? crocodile. I've, I've yes, blocked that did. one. You have blocked that I one. I have but blocked. It did taste quite similar it was to like chicken. chicken. But the thing is, it was it was a lot mostly bone and gristle and skin. And then the next day, you know, I not was, so good. Was not that so street good. vendor, or were you in a high end? It was semi. It was a cross between. It was in what they call basically a hawker market. Great, okay, yeah. great place to eat. Yeah, those are great places. Okay, so yeah. we only have time for You'll one find more picture. Which one would you choose if we could pick something to talk about? The man who made you ill. Oh, well, we could do that. Uh, or you could, you know, the thing is, one thing that I noticed on this trip was that I, I, I've traveled on Chinese New Year before, but for some reason I never really noticed how obnoxious it was. Why? Until this time. It's 15 days long, <laughs> and it's basically like a long rolling migraine headache. Yeah, it's it is, loud. It's like a train derailment of, of snare drums and metal pans. There was one day, like I spent, like you never know when something's going to be closed. Is it insanity? It <laughs> is. It is. It is a mental illness creating thing. I one day I was wandering for about 40 minutes trying to find cafes, and they're all closed because of Chinese New Year. Finally, I finally found this Vietnamese restaurant where I knew they'd have good Vietnamese coffee. And I sit down, and then a lion dance shows up. And it wasn't a traveling lion dance, it was a stationary lion yeah. dance. And, and were you at the station? I was, <laughs> I, was, I was at the station. I was guzzling Vietnamese coffee so I could get rid of my coffee yeah. withdrawal headache before the lion dance And headache. for people you who haven't headache. experienced yeah. them it's, up close, they're very, very loud. They're loud. Yeah, and they're it's tuneless. an Asian mariachi band. Yes. It's like just, they come to your table and, you know. Totally. Like, <laughs> yeah, and it's like cymbals and drums. There's nothing else. It's, it's, I tell you, Chinese New Year, I, I'm happy that you guys are happy for your two weeks. But uh, one no. day is enough for us. Yes, one day is fine. And uh, yeah, and then there's the fireworks. I had, you know. See, I love it. I love the noise. I love the cacophony. The chaos. I like the chaos. Uh -huh. I dig all that. Two weeks. Well, Let that came Fat Choi, my friend. And where can we read about this? <laughs> Um, I have some stories at the Taiyi. I think I have one more story coming up at the Taiyi. I've got a story for an Alberta magazine called West, and then that's going to be about Singapore food. And pick up Steve's book, uh, Who Killed Mom? A, uh, a beautiful homage to his family and specifically his mother. It's just a beautiful story. We would highly suggest Absolutely. it. Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you, you so Steve. much. You can go to Steve's website to find out everything about what he is up to and where he's going to be. We're going to take a quick break. And where we're